So how do you actually start working on your career when you get out this time in, in terms of music? Like, do you, do you hit the ground running or did you just kind of have to slowly start figuring shit out? Yeah, kind of like, I mean, I honestly, I did hit the ground running. I, I, I was in the halfway house and they only allow you a certain amount of time to get out of there. You have to have a job to get out. So I would say I'm going out job searching, which I was full of shit. I would, I would, you have to take them back like these business cards to let them know, look, at, I went to go look for a, a job here at this furniture store, here at this Burger King, here. At, you got to take them back business cards. Okay. So I would pay dudes to go get business cards for me. And I'll go studio and record. Because mm. I knew that I had to get this shit done. Like, there was nothing that was going to stop me from doing what I had to do. So I was in these studio sessions. I knew what time I had to be back. I'll be back. I'll meet the guy in the corner. Give me the business cards. Boom. Here you go. This is where I was searching at a job for today. The They'll tell you, oh, we're going to call him. I'm like, that's fine. Tell him I said hi. Boom. Mm -hmm. Here you go. You know? And that's, that, that's how I knew that I was determined. Was that I was risking my freedom again to actually go and do something positive. You know what I mean? Like, I'm recording music. I'm shooting a video. I'm, uh, that type of stuff, w to me, was more worth getting violated for than for me getting some violated for something really that right. makes no sense. You know what I mean? Like, that made more sense to me, like, mm. than anything. So I knew at that point that I was in for the long run and then this was going to be a positive run you know what i mean no offense but where did they think that you were going to get a job because realistically i right. don't think like enterprise rental car is going to hire you like <laughs> i'm telling you they had faith they had faith they had a lot of faith so i got to give them that you know what i mean like they definitely were i mean i guess it's just part of their job they have to do that you know what i mean right, so yeah. it was like i'm sure some of them knew like oh he wasn't looking for no job sometimes i would come in with bags from like certain stores in the mall and they'll be like, <laughs> like oh i stopped there for a second and got me a hot dog and got me some food like it just right. you know what i mean but you know they they would trip out because i i had you know people trying to help me out with the music that i met you know from before um in the system or whatnot some of these were wealthy people you know what i mean and they mm. they offered their hand to help me get get my foot in the door with this music and i, I would have Bentley's pulling up to the halfway house to pick me up and wow. you know the staff would be like hey um like you're living above your means over here bro and I'm like bro that's not my car like right it'd be different if I'm pulling up parking this right here in your driveway like I'm not you know what I mean like if they're picking me up I can't tell somebody hey don't bring your car that you own. The you last know? thing you want is the employee at the halfway house see, thinking that you're driving around in a Bentley because then they're just going to be like, man, fuck this guy. Let's That's how they were. <laughs> but some of them were, were happy like right. to see it. You know, I got to give them, you know, there were certain ones that would be like, That's right, get it. You know, and then there was the ones that you could see that little bit of envy that they'll come to my, my cell or whatever you want to call it because we had a room with like six different people in the halfway house where they'll come and look under your bunk and see if you got any contraband, shit like that. Like, So I would notice the ones that were kind of easy because easy they would see that we're doing decent, and then we, I would see the ones that would be like, oh, no, fuck this guy. Like, he's doing too much. He's He's got to be doing something illegal. But they would come and search and find nothing because right. I wasn't doing shit, you know what I mean, but music, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like, okay, cool, you look all you want. Look for what you're, what you're trying to find and, you know, good luck. So did you start doing numbers? Like, how, how did you start putting your stuff out? Because I feel like you've, you've gone viral on Worldstar a couple of times, right? We have a, we've had a couple of videos on Worldstar. We took one or so. We took one off, I believe. Just, really? How come? Yeah. Um, I, f I honestly forgot. I, I think it was just certain things in the video didn't match up. You know what I mean? So we kind of wanted to take it down. We took it down. We were supposed to put it back up, but I the same uh, dude that shot my video, I couldn't get in contact with him or something like that. So we didn't we didn't mess with it, you know? Um, yeah, like, I think that just with my social media, it's funny because I got to a certain point on my Instagram before where I was, like, maybe at 14, 15,000 followers, and, um, I lost my page. Like, somebody hacked it or whatnot, whatever happened, mm. it was lost. And I told myself, you know what, I'm not even going to do this Instagram shit again. It's too hard to gain these, these followers. People don't give a shit, you know what I mean? Like, you got to really be out here doing backflips for people to be like, oh, hey, look at this guy. Like, you know what I mean? And... I said, you know what, I'm going to give it one more try. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So I made a, made a new Instagram. Um, I started doing videos of myself just rapping. Like, because I was, like I said, I was dealing with the whole ankle monitor and shit. So it was hard for me to keep the people's attention for so long with only throwback selfies that I was posting. I couldn't go nowhere. So I couldn't, I wasn't really doing shit but staying home. So I had my homie come in and recording me at the house, like on the table just like this. We were recording music. He was sitting there with, you know, 
and he would make it sound like if we were in the studio. So it sounded good. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do this until I get off. But uh -huh. the thing was keeping the keeping the people's attention, people, the, the people on Instagram, because they don't want to just keep seeing throwback pictures, throwback pictures. I'm like, I've seen this picture already. I've seen right. it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't have no way of keeping their focus. So I started doing these rap videos of myself just doing rap. And it was crazy because I had like maybe 3,000 followers, but my views on these these songs were getting like, 50, 60,000, and I'm like, how if I have 3,000 people that follow me? Like, where are these songs going right. that these people are all just seeing them? So I just kept doing it, you know? And then I would take some down and put a different one up just to see how, like, what is it called? Like, that, um, the algorithm. The algorithm. Mm -hmm. Like, I would try to see how, what is it that, is it a certain time that I have to pose? Is it a certain thing? Like, you know what I mean? So I think I, I kind of learned it more or less what times. And then after that, I stopped giving a shit. I just started posting shit whenever I wanted, and they just... They kept going like, and my and my, my you know my following my is is still pushing, still moving up. You know, I mean it's kind of a gift, especially when you think that like you know you you started getting locked up before there really was social media, and then you have really like only been like free for a couple of right. periods of social media. It's right. like if if I were like to just be dropped down on earth right now and told, hey, here's Instagram. I mean, what are the odds that I'm going to be able to figure out how the fuck to really actually utilize this platform? I feel like it's only because I've been using it for 10 years that I know right. how to go do it properly, you know? It must have been kind of overwhelming at one point. Yeah, no, most definitely. I didn't even know how to use the phone when I came home. I'm sitting there looking at it like, what does this mean? What does this mean? How do you do this? Like, how do I turn it on? Like, you know what right. I mean? It was, it was rough, but I mean, it, it kind of like, I feel like anything, bro, once you, once you learn, it's like, it's up to you to keep, you know? going with it like if you if you like it then do it right go for it so i you know i kind of caught the wave of how everything worked i started off with the whole facebook stuff and facebook kind of was too too family orientated for mm -hmm. me like you know i was like the instagram was just pictures 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 so i said okay i could do this you know right and it worked and you know i just it started working to my benefit too especially after you know i st started you know we built the effort which is my my record label with along with my boy right here um, right you know we we uh, started that, and it's been like all business. You know what I mean? Like now, it, now we we got an LLC. We got you know everything in place. Got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We've been on CNN. You know what I mean? With Anthony Bourdain, a lot of stuff through my brother Stefan Orio. You know, back to my boy. Like he's put us in positions that only he could have done. He's really kind of you looked know? out for you, like because I was thinking, I'm like, there's not. You know, we're, most rappers to come up from the underground and stuff at a certain point, unless they just have like one song that's going super crazy or whatever. Usually, like they have to like bigger rappers will end up looking out for them yeah, and stuff. Pull and, them out. and Esteban's kind of that for you. Like he's really kind of helped yeah, you out a lot. Yeah, he's definitely huh? been a, a big you know help in our in our um, journey right here. You know what I'm saying? He's he's got us to places that I'm sure that we probably wouldn't have been able to without him. You know what I mean? And it's he's hell appreciated for that. You know, I got tracks with. My boy Yellow Wolf now, you know what I'm saying? And that's all part of that. Like, it's that one, you know, plugged us up, brought Yellow Wolf to my neighborhood. And Yellow Wolf had a hell of a time. And he loved my homies. My homies loved him. And, you know, that that wasn't Esteban saying, hey, do a song with him. Like, Esteban didn't even mention anything. He didn't even know I did music. But it was the, the, the love and the, you know what I mean, relationship that we built that day that just carried us on. Now, I got two tracks with Yellow Wolf now, you know? Right. I got two tracks with China Mac. Like, I got, you know, all these these things that are starting to come in place. Like, it's it's really a blessing and really dope, you know? That's dope, yeah. I mean, uh, in terms of, like, what kind of music you make, how, how would you describe it to somebody who hasn't heard you, and what do you aspire to do when you do make a song? Like, um, I mean, I do gangster rap, basically. You know, I don't sit here and get into the whole... Um, Chicano rap or the, you know, that type of stuff. Like, I do gangster rap. It's like if you're, you're a Chicano or you're a black or you're a white and you like it, that's what I do. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it's like that's what I, you know, I learned to listen to. Like, I grew up listening to his gangster rap. You know what I mean? It, it really didn't matter who it was coming from. It was like if it sounded good and that's what made my head bob to the music, like, I'll definitely... Listen to that. So that's that's how I feel about that. You know what I mean? Like with with myself. Like I do gangster rap, and that's what I do. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's kind of interesting because like I feel like you talk about stuff in the music that you probably wouldn't sit here and talk about in an interview. Like you kind of go more into your your past or or like you know 
what the the gangster lifestyle is all actually like like to a certain extent it would feel like you were snitching on yourself if you said some of that shit in an interview but in the music you can just kind of well, let this out in a different I, way I right? feel like in my in my in my music I talk about myself like I don't mention other people I don't you know throw nobody under the bus ever mm. myself I talk about what I've been through my struggle and that's why I kind of explain as well is that I'm I'm not you know some people will sit there and be like oh he's glorifying that lifestyle or he's this and at the same time it's like no this is this is me telling my story what I've already did time for what I've already been through and for the kids to see and say hey if that's you're gonna go through all that to be you know a gang member or to be where he's at now like this is what I gotta go through so I'm kind of explaining to them like now you got a choice this, you could do all this and end up wherever it is it might lead you. It might not lead you where I'm at. It might lead you somewhere else. So you got to kind of, you know, play that out by yourself. But at the same time, I'm trying to give knowledge to people, like, to understand, like, okay, look, there's there's other outlets out there, you know what I'm saying? Music is definitely one of them, and I and I chose, that's what I chose to do, you know? Like I said, if I speak about something that's speaking about myself, and nobody else, basically, you know what I mean? I'm talking about my own life that I've lived and, you know, everything that I've been through. Mainly it's talking about my, you know, my me getting shot, me doing time, and the rest is all smoking weed. It's just the normal stuff, but at the end of the day, I put it in a form where it's a story mm. that people like that shit, you know what I mean? People, they, they're drawn to it because it's like some people have lived that, and then there's some people that haven't but are intrigued by it. You know what I mean? So it's like it's a win-win situation, especially if you're not throwing somebody under the bus or putting people on blast and you're not getting nobody in trouble in the process of you doing what you're doing. That's you know? one of the easiest ways to blow up and rap is basically to, to air out another rapper or to say, right. hey, fuck this hood, fuck, fuck right. all this shit. We've seen a million rappers, like, basically, like, if you put out a song right now dissing some neighborhood or whatever, I right. mean... Millions and millions of views, no problem. Right. You know that. Yeah, no. I, what keeps you from like? Because you, you're from the old school to a certain degree, right? Yeah, I just feel like, I feel like that's giving people too much credit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like when I when I first started rapping, then yeah, I might have tried that. You know what I mean? And try to start. But growing up and me now, seeing how much different my music is from other people's music, it's like I don't feel like I even need to do that. You know what I mean? I feel like. I let my lyrics and my music speak for itself, and it, that's what it's been doing. And, and pushing me further further above in the game has been only because of my music and, like you said, because of help that we get, you know what I mean? Because my brother Esteban realized, recognizes, you know, real love and support and real L.A. street stuff, you know if, what I'm saying? If, if you, you know, had a show and you just have, happened to be talking to a young fan, you know, say there's like a 15-year-old kid right. who is, is fucking with your music, and you look at him and you see yourself when you were 15 and he's kind of at a crossroads. Like he, he fucking with the gangster lifestyle, but maybe he's still in school and shit. Like how do you approach a conversation with him given that you, you want better for him than, than what you have, but you also understand that he's in the same situation you were and he wants to, you know, have support from a, a, a network of people and stuff. He don't want to feel like he's alone in the streets. Right. How, do, how do you speak to him? Well, it's, it's crazy you ask that because I – um. Uh, a couple years back, you know, when I was home from the feds or whatnot, I was going to the schools and talking to kids, excuse me, at the at the schools um, f through this company that I used to work for. They would have us, um, you know, on our little free time that we would have, they would take us to schools to go chop it up with the kids. And, you know, I would basically explain to them, like, at the end of the day, there's a different way to go about everything. Like, at the end of the day, there's somebody to answer to when it comes to, like, you're in class. Your teacher got the last say so. So you're sitting there talking or bullshitting, and she says, hey, be quiet. Instead of, you know, actually arguing with her or going back and forth, just be quiet, and you won. Mm. You know what I mean? At the, at the end of the day, it's like they're, they're always going to win. Mm. So you don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would be in the system. It's so funny because, you know, some, sometimes the, the sergeants or whoever would walk in and be like, hey, how long you been here? I've been here three years. Damn, like, why haven't I seen you? Like, do you got any write-ups? Have you been, you know? Nope, I don't got none. You figured that out early on? You had to, you know what I mean? It's like that's how you get through your system time without actually fucking getting yourself in more bullshit. You know I, that's I mean? the thing that I wish I got as a kid is, like, mm -hmm. just don't put yourself in these situations of getting in trouble from doing some loud-ass shit. If you're going to get in trouble, 
have it be because you were doing some fucking criminal mastermind shit behind the scenes <laughs> that you just somehow ended up getting popped for. But like just making shit hot for yourself is like, right. like the ultimate way if you want to finesse your way through high school and shit is do good in school. Make it so your parents don't give a fuck about like aren't worried about you because you actually are getting that shit done. And then take all the rest of your time and actually be able to do whatever. And meanwhile, the heat is off you because you are right. getting your shit done. Like Stay I mean, out the th way. that's the smarter way to handle it.